paradigm shift might be the kind of thing that creepy English lecturers say as they try to chat up the hot first year students, but it's also the most important part of the brilliant battle system in Final Fantasy XIII. That's how it's done. Astonishingly, the first 20 hours of the game are effectively a marathon tutorial designed to acclimatise you to the paradigm system. But once you've waded through a lot of angst and hairspray, it's too much, isn't it? The game really opens up. From here, you're free to choose which characters to include in your party and have them learn skills in any combat role. Which is where this guide comes in. We've come up with some simple strategies to load the Paradigm deck in your favour. Before that though, two obvious but still vital to remember tips. First, always try to approach enemies from behind. Steady. If they don't spot you, you'll be able to make a preemptive strike, filling their stagger bars and enabling you to finish them far quicker. That wasn't so bad. Also, don't forget to use the Libra technique whenever you encounter a new monster in order to analyse its elemental weaknesses and ensure your pastel-haired Harry Potters don't use the wrong spells. Next, on to a more advanced trick. The timing of actions in FF13 is governed by the ATB bar. And before you say, duh, did you know this? If you shift paradigms as soon as you've completed your last set of actions, the entire team will immediately get a full ATB bar, meaning they're instantly ready to start bringing the abracadabra. Watch an expert player battling and they'll rhythmically shift paradigms after every couple of turns to crank up the pressure. But which paradigm combinations work best? Well, for bog standard battles against enemies you expect to defeat and want to get done quickly, we use this setup with Fang, Lightning and Hope. Start off using the Relentless Assault paradigm to build up your chain bonus and stagger the enemies. Switch between this and aggression every couple of turns to keep your ATB bar recharged quickly. And if things do get hairy, drop into diversity for a bit to let your healer apply some magic sponge. If you're facing sterner enemies or a boss with a health bar longer than the M1, a different setup is required. We're now using Fang, Lightning and Saz and start with the bully paradigm so the saboteur can debuff the enemies while the synergist buffs the party. You may need to switch to even odds after this to bring your medic into play, but once everyone's fighting fit again, switch to the attack-minded strategy of our previous example. If you're in danger of getting overwhelmed, switch to solidarity to allow your sentinel to draw the enemy attacks while the medic heals. And if the buffs wear off, spend another couple of turns in bully. Otherwise, easy. Just rinse and repeat. If you still keep getting your ass handed to you, make a note of which element the enemy attacks use and equip accessories that reduce that type of damage. Also, consider using Aegisol or Fortisol beforehand to instantly apply several buffs, or having a super defensive paradigm such as Combat Clinic, which uses two medics and a sentinel for when things go properly coffin shaped. Our final tip always wear a seatbelt. Oh, for the love of all that's good! OK, one more. Remember that when fighting multiple foes, you should usually pick off the weaker ones first, thereby reducing incoming damage. Stay tuned to First Play for more how-to guides. Just like I planned.